big focus for us uh, is not so much you know the recruitment of women into into the organisation uh, you know is is, is not a, not the biggest issue for us. The biggest issue is how do we get them to fulfil their potential and how are we making sure that we can uh, can break through you know that glass ceiling, and it's getting better, but it's too slow. Do you know what we call the problem? The messy middle. It's the messy. It is the because messy middle because it's middle management where we we see. It's, the issue. Uh, and and our, uh, it's exactly it. So our, 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 where we lose where we lose women is again it's between thirty and forty. Mm. It is in that it is in that middle band, and what, what, once once we're, once we're through that, it's it, it's not an issue. Uh, but what we have, what we're what a big focus on us because we we've set ourselves a target of fifty percent uh, by twenty twenty, uh, uh, which you know we may not get there, but we're gonna we're sure as hell gonna try. Um, There's no such thing as trying. You either do it do or it. you don't. Yeah, exactly. So but you're gonna, get yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, we we are going. So, and and I think that comes down to two things, which is one is top down leadership. And it is really sponsoring it, uh, as well as mentoring, uh, and it really is it's pulling up. But the other is enabling, and I think a, a key a aspect of that, and one of the things that I think, and and you're you're dead right, diversity is about business as well as what's right. Uh, diversity gets better results in a digital economy. Agility, collaboration, all those things are absolutely critical. You know, uh, and diversity fuels innovation. Uh, and innovation drives growth. So it's absolutely critical for us. But what is also critical with 40,000 people is agile working, properly agile working. Uh, and, and that we're trying to make a, a real driver of helping women get through that, as you describe it, messy middle. Mm. So I'm going to come back to that because I want yep. to talk about some of the solutions you will be bringing into the workplace yep. to make sure we help everyone realize their potential. Yep. But I want to go to Eric for a second because I just realized, I didn't know why I wanted to pair you both, yep. but I just decided I know why my gut told me to do it. One, you're under 30, and I think you're slightly I'm, over 30. I'm slightly over 30. Slightly yep. over 30. And one of the things I talk a lot about with diversity, we talk about gender and race, I want to talk about age. So yep. in the digital world where we talk about digital natives and digital is in your DNA and we all want to you know, hire the under 30s, how do you perceive the older generation in incorporating them into teams? Because now we have you know, the older generation reporting to the younger generation, the younger generation not wanting to work with people their parents' age. Mm. Yet, you know, we bring a ton of wisdom and experience to the table, and you know Snapchat. So how are you dealing with this? So I think, uh, and I think it's really interesting, I think there's a few ways. Um, one is, I think for a younger person, I try to always find smart older people because we can learn, obviously, so much from them. Like what? What do you learn from us? Everything. Okay, good. You, you, good answer. You know, you know so much. But I think, but I think <laughs> what's, where I get frustrated is sort of, other generations who aren't, and we have to be open, younger people have to be open to everything that you bring, and you have to be open to everything that we bring. And I don't think age is not, age is a mindset, um, and you can be young and old, right? Or you can be old and young, um, and I think that uh, I look and sort of admire older people who, I call them screenagers. Screenagers? Right? Who are, who are, who are I have still, never heard that. Who are still, who still download the latest apps, get excited by technology, and they may not know exactly the latest filter on Snapchat, but they're curious and interested in learning. Um, and so I actually think it comes from both directions and sort of we have to be open to our elders and our elders need to be open to what we bring to the table. And I think if, if both come to with an open mindset, you can sort of create a really interesting environment. Uh, screenagers, yeah. have you heard that one before? I actually have. Because you were chuckling. But. I, and uh, I was chuckling about a couple of things, which is one, of course, and let's be really, really clear, I actually do think I'm still 17. And, uh, and I think it is mindset. I think, uh, and I think the ability, you know, you, some of our most conservative people are the younger ones in technology. It's, 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 mm. it's quite, it, and it's young, younger, younger males in technology. It's quite, it's quite, in, it's quite interesting. And I think that, but, you know, diversity in all its forms works. You know, I think it's important we, we try and stick to, to gender because that, that cuts across everything as well. But, but, but getting really diverse teams, blending that experience together with, you know, the, the newness and the energy uh, that younger people bring, I think, is, is absolutely critical to success. 
So I, I think that brings me to, you know, from your both of your perspectives in yeah. digital. Do you find a difference in mindset from gender? I mean, do you see that women versus men bring um, different perspective to the digital world? Or, I mean, well, do you want to go first? Is it a gender I, I, issue, or is it just a? I, I, I don't, I, I don't I, see it. I don't. I don't think it's a gender issue. Um, I think. Uh, FOMO knows no bounds. FOMO means tell us old people. Fear, fear of missing out. Okay. And I think that I think that social media in the workplace um, fosters that. And I think that there's a huge level of unhappiness in the workplace. I think by the younger generation because they see their friends doing other cool things on Instagram, and they're like, oh well, why don't? Because you don't post that you're sitting at your desk. Right, you post that you're out and about, and you post that you're sort of doing all these things. Um, you know, I'm here in Davos. I post the sunny sky in the morning. I didn't post, post that I was the TFQ lounge. Right, I didn't post that I was in the back, like at the corner, typing out emails for three hours and ignoring people. Right. So I think I think when you're sitting in your office and you're young, man, woman, cis, non cis, right? You know, you're, that you're uh, that that you're seeing what other people are doing, and you're inherently sort of like unhappy while you're sitting in your desk. Yeah. I think I, that creates a problem. Yeah, I, I, I think a critical point there is what is the workplace? And, and well, That's a good point. That's yeah, a very and, good point. And, and I think the role of the workplace, the role of the physical environment, is dramatically different than it was 20 years ago even. Uh, and what we have to do, and we have to really be thinking about, you know, a much, much, I mean, again, to people talk about work-life balance, there isn't. There isn't any anymore. It's actually merged. Uh, you have one life. You have with one. Many we have dimensions. one life with many dimensions. Work, uh, you know, for for good or bad. We're unfortunately we're 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 always connected. We're never we're, we're never off. But so we have to we have to merge our lives and we have to we have to manage them in the way that we do. But there's there's no uh, I, I'm working over here and I'm not working over here in the same way that we that that I think is a is both a risk and an opportunity in terms again of driving you know, again, driving towards that 50%. But we have to structure lives so that, so that women never feel that they're out of the workplace, which is one of the, uh, one of the, the, the biggest things in that messy middle is, you know, it is obviously maternity. Uh, and, and, and actually, how do we bridge that gap? And we're, I think we're, we're exponentially better at it than we were uh, even five years ago. Okay, so... I had this amazing epiphany about maternity leave yep. because if women take maternity leave and all these new companies, digital companies now say, okay, we're so progressive, we have paternity leave. Yep. The problem is from all the work we're doing, we realize men don't take it. Why? Why, why wouldn't would you take paternity leave? Oh, I wish I could, <laughs> but I'm too old, but yeah. I'm sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. Mo most but, men, but probably not for as long. Yeah. That's most, a, yeah. Exactly. So most men don't take paternity leave, either A, because it shows a sign of weakness, yeah. or B, they really do feel that it is the woman's yeah. role, so they don't need to take it. Yeah. So my epiphany was, to make it equal again, if we truly want to balance the male-female you know, challenges, we should have mandatory parental leave. Because if yeah. we make it mandatory parental leave, then men and women have to take it. Yeah. And you have flexibility. I know, it's a really good idea, right? And so then you have flexibility to say, if the, if the parental leave is three months, you have the flexibility, because what is workplace today, to take it over two years as you wish, yep. or something like that. Yeah. I think I'm Which hearing anecdotally, and I don't know the data, that more men are going on. Yeah. Paternal leave. I sort of, I sort of feel that that's becoming more of a. And, and it's seriously. But they don't it, have it, to, so that's the problem. Yeah. It's right. elective. Women really do want. To, I mean, first of all, I don't know if you saw the Harvard study, right, Lisa? That's right. That said, and tell me if I'm right or wrong, but it said men have the need to spend it like 45 minutes with their children a day, and women have the maternal need to spend three hours a day. Is that correct? That's exactly right. And it's socially produced as well. I mean, socially constructed. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. And but, so paternity yeah. leave, while men might be taking it more, it still is elective. Yeah. And, and, the, and the one thing I would <laughs> say, the, that it is, it, this does vary quite significantly across the world. So in the US, that, that sort of, again, 
fear, fear of taking, you know, fear of taking paternity leave is more extreme than you go to Scandinavia and there is, it, it isn't. They're, they're much, much more leaning into paternity. So let's go back to the digital economy leads, diversity leads to innovation, yep. innovation leads, leads to, to growth, growth yep. which is what you said. So, and then we talked about the male-female perspective. Why do you believe that having more women in the workplace leads to innovation. So I'm A plus B equals C, B plus B equals C, so A equals C. So I'm going to challenge you on diversity right. equals growth. Uh, well, for a start, in the decision-making forums, if you get five blokes like me who are in their 50s and uh, male, then all that happens is the most alpha of those five, five take, end up taking the decisions. Uh, and what, what, you, what you really need That's, is... That's, by the way, just pause, so honest yeah. and unplugged and authentic, and I am so blown away by what you just said, because, it's, A, it's true. But it's true. Okay, yeah. good. So, so I just want to hold that thought. Right, but, but, it, but it is absolutely true. And, 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 and what we really need, and, and in the last session you were saying, it is a mindset, and it is about being open, right? You open to change. So the, what's the one thing about the digital economy? Because we, we can, I'm sure we can witter along for, forever because I've sort of been in digital for almost as long as you've been alive. Uh, <laughs> and, um, wow. uh, and see it from, and you see it from slightly two d different angles, but it's the same thing. But what's the number one thing is change, right? And the chain, you know, the cliche, and everyone in, this, in, in, in the forum will say the change in the next three years is greater than the last ten. It's never been a, you know, change is, it's never been as slow as it's going to be in the future, blah, 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 blah. And then they do nothing about it. And they go, oh, yeah. blimey, hasn't it changed fast? Like, really leaning into change, really break it, recognising you absolutely have to break the things that you've sort of held sacrosanct for a period of time really needs quite radical thinking. And you're never going to get that unless you get real diversity of teams, unless you get dissonant voices in a room. Uh, and you know, wh what everyone knows, and you used to study homophily, you know, if you, once you've got to four people, an extra one that looks like you, the incremental knowledge of that group is approximately zero. You bring someone in who's very different, they integrate much more difficultly. It's much more dissonant, but the collective knowledge of that team of five goes up exponentially. So let me and, ask you, know, you each, oh. In, innovation always happens right at the crossroads of different ideas and, and fields and sectors. Yep. And I think it's not, it's, you know, women and men and it's LGBTQ and it's LGBT, introverts. Wait, LGBTQQII. That's what we just learned. You added, you missed two letters. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's my jet lag. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's introverts and it's extroverts and it's scientists and it's, it's yep. you know, digital people. You know, you know so I think it's, 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 you know, a whole slew of different people that you need to think about when you're building, building a team. Yep. Okay, so now yep. I want to go to one last question, which is from Nigel, from a big traditional corporate culture, I want to know what you want to break. Yep. And from a young company starting now, so Eric is working, um, creating a new cable company called Layer 3 TV. So you're building a whole culture today. I'd like to know one of your first new cultural rules you're going to create so that diversity <coughs> and pay gap and all that is not even an issue because you're going to start from scratch so you don't have to worry about it. So I want to hear what you're going to do first and foremost. And then Nigel, I want to know what you're going to break get rid of the junk in the trunk and create some new room for new, <coughs> new shit. What are yeah. you going to do? How long we got? Cause, cause the, Give me cause, top, top, cause, top three. Because Well, I think there's, there's two things about our business, but it's, it, this is very instructive of the wider thing. It's, so we're, an adverse, we're an advisory business as such, so we're a B2B business. So we work with our clients. So our biggest clients are GM and Mondelez and, and companies like that. And so, actually, we don't even, we have to break ours, but we have to break theirs as well. And, and that becomes a really interesting dynamic. And, and, and on a lot of the discussions I'm in with clients, it's not about their marketing service. It's how do you enable that kind of change? So I think, you know, the, the, the key things, and, and they would, you know, so one of our biggest clients, they would describe their, the middle, not as a messy middle, they would call it the frozen tundra. Right. Ooh, that's and, good. And that is, and, 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 and mm. at the top, they're really into change. They can get that energy coming in at the bottom, and it just gets absolutely crushed in the middle. 
Um, and so, so when we're looking at our business is, is, is quite cellular in structure. And we have, we have startups, you know, we have a mobile startup, you know, with, you know, 170 people and the average age is 25. So, and it's a, and that And they stay in more than three years? Is a, no, they're, no, they're, they're fine. But they, they are, they, you know, they have a culture of their own. And yet our traditional media business, right, which has been going for 30 years, then we really are, we are having to almost like try and dismantle mm. that very, very conservative culture. Mm. Uh, and very, again, you know, work is turning up. And, and that is a, that's, a, that's a real big thing. So the, 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 the attendance bug is one thing that we've got to, we've got to cut through. It is people seeing you know, their real estate, their desk. You know, here's my bit of, here's my land, here's my, here's my territory. Uh, and seeing their career progression as quite linear. Mm. That's the next thing we've really got to break. And then, uh, and then the, the other thing is literally, and we've debated this long and hard, and I've been on the gender parity group here for about 12 years, you know, is actually setting a target and actually saying we are going to, you know, which we've really thought long and hard about and for years we said, well, we won't, we won't set targets, but actually setting a target, going out on our global conference, on our regional summits, everything, and just going, here's what we're going to do. And setting that as a, and making that part of the performance culture. You know, it's interesting because I just got a mandate, um, a request really from um, someone that runs one of the largest holding companies, that his <coughs> key initiative in 2017 is to bring more women of color into his organization. Yep. Slam duck. So That's he, it. so I'm going out. Yep. We're going to go recruit at Harvard. We're going to bring, you know, it's just not that complicated. No. You know, I, I, and if you have the will, there is the way. You just have to really yeah. make it, you know, a priority and decide that's what you're going to do. The one, the, the, so just, just to add one thing, which I think is, is really important uh, and, and we get obsessed by, is growth. Right? If we're growing and we've grown, uh, and then it's much easier to fix some of those things. It's much easier. To, where people always use it as a crutch and as an excuse is, oh, well, it, you know, we're a meritocracy, you know. I've I've interviewed for this job, and actually, it was a it was a man that was better, that was, you know, that was most qualified. Is that the, the faster we're growing, the more we're bringing uh, people into the business, the more we can affect change. But then you have to keep them. Yeah, absolutely. Can we come work to you? Yeah, <laughs> hiring. I would love okay, you let's to. hear because I got to wrap, and then we'll have this. We'll continue this because this is a really important conversation in general, and I love the traditional and the. The really I new company. I know, I know, I know. It's just what it is. But it, your your issue is really the integration of the digital and the traditional. You're yeah. starting a whole new company from scratch. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, I, and I think, and, and we think about this a lot. We've grown in three years to, you know, we're a startup. Of, you know, we've grown to about in 165 people. Um, we have offices in different parts of America. So it's so we've thought a lot about culture and, and what that looks like. Um, and I think. The definition of a startup, which is generally a flat environment, generally every door, if there are doors, are, are always open. If there are doors. Right? Um, <laughs> and, and I think the ability to redefine what it means to be in the office, right? You don't get necessarily a badge of honor because you're the last one out anymore. Um, you sort of get a badge of honor because you're doing the best work. Um, and so we allow new parents, you know, I've, uh, one of my, my first employees was a new dad and he goes home every night to, to put his daughter uh, to sleep. and. We're, and he does great work, and he's back online afterwards, and we're emailing. You know, so I, I think that uh, that the definition of a startup allows for uh, a conversation to happen, allows for you to redefine what it means to be in the workplace, and and hopefully that that sets a culture that as we grow, knock on wood, uh, you know, that will it'll keep going because it was sort of there from the beginning. So are these written rules? Are they unwritten rules? Are they uncorporate rules? How do you communicate that culture? I. I think they're part of the management team that, that talks about it every day, and we have very open and honest conversations sort of at, at the management team level, and then it, it trickles down. It's, it's nowhere written. I actually think that um, now that we've grown up and that we've survived sort of becoming a very small startup and you know we've sort of gone to the next stage, I think we're in the midst of thinking about what that looks like. Um, but I hear all the time when people come and interview with us, they say, I hear it's a really nice culture. And that's not something that we sort of put out or we do press about or anything like that. So it's, it's somehow working sort of 
because people yeah. tell their friends and they're excited and so forth. It's easy with and 165, it's harder with 40,000. I don't envy you. <laughs> so, well, and, and actually that's a really in, in, interesting point. What I was going to say is that the, 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 the issue all the time then is I can do it with 165 and, what, and if you've got a culture there and, it, and then, you know, and then it's going to 500. And then it's going to, and it's how do you scale and what is the right size and all those things because there the kind of to be an inevitability. And this is where, you know, if you like, experience, age, and, and youth, you know, it, it, and, and again, old people have got, to be, have got to be much more honest about, you know, here's where we screwed up, yeah. you know, previously. And, and, and this is just, it's a slightly different dynamic, but there are certain things, especially in the preservation of good culture. Uh, yeah. How do, you, how do you preserve that as you start to, to become, you know, mis, more disaggregated? And I think, and I think now that we're hopefully going to grow beyond 165, yeah. that we're now, we, you know, again, we survived the first three years, so now it's sort of like, okay, now we need to think about how do you do that as you get. Well, you have a 166, people. so now you get 165 to 166. Oh, she wants to work for him. And that's it. We share. We share. Okay. But I think we're hiring. We're hiring. We're going to wrap. I think, you know, what I did when I started my own company was I created the young corporate rules. I broke every rule I hated about corporate America, rewrote the rules, but I did pass it down from generation to generation in an unofficially written way. So it was the oral commandments that yep. I created, but every generation you know, or every new person that came in was indoctrinated with that philosophy and they had to pay it forward, you yeah. know, to their teams. And I think that it's just really important that we create that multi-generational yes. culture, but a culture that will attract and retain the best yeah. talent. The oral. And, and create and, the Yeah, that's right. The oral thing. And having a philosophy and beliefs. Yeah, and living and really breathing important. it authentically. Yeah. I think that's very important. Anyways, I want to thank you for sharing your insights. This was amazing. These guys will hang around and be here. And then we just... All week. Oh, <laughs> who, needs, who needs to go to Davos when you're Exactly. Hello. Right?